Okay, so I've, uh, I've done some tinkering with the uh, via the serial interface here, and uh, uh, it's not a very not a very friendly user interface. Um, it's not very interactive. Um, it's in the user's manual, and it's kind of explained, but it's completely unexpected. So it's it's hard to sort of accept when you first read it. But yeah, it's pr pretty bad. The the only thing you can, I can get it to do is switch on um, uh, through the serial interface commands. Um, I can't get it to do anything else. Uh, I just get the the dreaded the uh, slow red LED blinking. Um, I don't even think I can even get it to turn off. Once it goes into that mode, it stops stops accepting serial commands. Um, so I have to use the the, the, the power switches. Uh, that's being controlled, that serial interface is by that, uh, that microcontroller, I think it's an NEC, they call it a MICOM. Um, in the circuit diagram, um, there's a really big chip, and uh, I don't think it's that one, I think it, it'll be under that, that one there, so I'll um, pull the heatsink off and have a look. Okay, so I'm going to try um, reflowing this, this BGA package that was under the heat sink um, yeah, that way. Uh, this is the the main chip for the, this this board apparently for this one off and it's one of one two three four five BGA packages on here that I can see that I've noticed. So um, what I've done is I've, I've put I've got I've had some um, expired uh, solder paste which I'm uh, just put some dabs in the corners and in the in the center of the chip just um, maybe did it a bit there but I uh, got rid of what I could off that um, that's going to help act as a as a gauge or a guide for the amount of heat I'm applying to that thing so all I need to do now is just use my uh, a flex pen um, to get in under the balls and I'll go in from all four sides and just basically bathe it in, in the flux um, and the, the, the act of heating it up should um, uh, get rid of uh, whiskers and, uh, and any cold joints and stuff like that in theory um, uh, without Expensive X-ray type equipment. You're never going to go anywhere. And uh, this is a gamble. And I haven't got a proper air tool. Instead, I'm just going uh, going to uh, luck it out with um, a little gas heater, which has been sitting unused for a while. I don't know if I've just remembered I had it and uh, started using it for heat shrink and uh, I'm not overly familiar with it uh, in terms of heat this will be my first experiment I, re realistically I should be experimenting on something less as critical as this these things are supposed to go through you know, heat profiles and stuff like that but uh, the stage I'm at now is, is that I believe the, 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 the power supply unit I'll get the board out of shot just over here uh, the camera's at a different angle from before it's now on the bench looking forward as you can probably surmise from the angle of my hands Uh, what I've done is I've, I've uh, used gravity, I've, I've um, pressed the pen which then releases the flux and uh, let that dribble down. In theory it should close, I'm not sure how many balls, how many rows of balls of this thing has, has got, whether it's a complete, should have, should have done that, but this is my hot air tool, um, well, butane torch with a hot air attachment. I've got it on, on its lowest setting. Uh, 
as it so it has an igniter, yada yada. And uh, I'm going to use my little magnifying glass and I will zoom in first. Try to find uh, where it's still in focus. Is that still in focus? No, going out of focus there. So that, uh, hopefully that's a good shot. setting and yeah, it's probably a bad angle because you're on my on right hand but I should put the camera on the other side. Uh, anyway, let's see how we go. So the, the trick is to um, get to the top of the chip. Gradually heat it up. So I want to go a bit beyond when the, the, uh, the solder paste melts. Now I don't know whether you guys can see the flux. So moving in underneath the BGA package. Now what happens with, with the BGA is, is that they self-centering. So when you manufacture it it's important that they put the um, solder mask on correctly. Otherwise you get shorts between the BGA packages. Um, that's heating, that uh, solder paste is, uh, doesn't appear to be working. That's, I would at this stage be more than satisfied that I've heated that chip up. Basically, uh, I, I would normally work off the flux, and uh, this was uh, something I saw and I thought it would be interesting whether it worked. But uh, it could be something to do with the fact that uh, my solder paste is off, and it's not properly melting, at least it doesn't appear to be. I'm not going to move the chip to find out whether it's actually melting the balls, because I don't know how, what the density on that BGA is. I think I'm just going to, to say that the that, uh, solar paste experiment didn't work. And I'm just going to say that that's heat up enough. I don't want to touch the chip with my uh, thermal probe because it will probably move it if it is molten. And I'm, if it moves, that I'm not, I, don't, I don't need to measure the temperature. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, 
temperature, I think that's plenty long enough. Um, probably more than it should have been. Not moving. So I'll wait for that to cool down by itself. Don't want to put too much of a temperature gradient on it. And uh, put the heat sink back on and then give it a quick test. Might be lucky, never know. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was is to, to take the heat sink off here. Uh, you got to uh, these little clips, spring loaded, and I've used a, a 3mm hex to go over the end to compress to compress the uh, uh, the, the little wing tips on on the on 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 the plastic clip, and uh, then gone in. So I've, I've held the board up like that, sandwiched with, this, with, the, with the driver on one side and my needle nose pliers on the, on the other side, helping to pull it off off the head. So reattaching that heat sink, uh, I've just put the, the clips back into the into the top, and uh, just make sure the uh, the wing tips, the wing wings on those clips are. Feel good, reasonable. Um, in addition to the clips being spring loaded between the the plate and the the, the, the head, there's little spring loaded earthing, and you can I can tell from the the, the pad it that it's depressed and it's sorry it's deformed, so the uh, the silicon mat. There's probably um, some um, uh, not as much clearance as there was when it was manufactured, so I've, I've put some um, heat sink compound um, on there to try and improve the uh, the thermal transfer. And I need to be careful when I do this and pick the diagonals. Where is it? Some movement there. Uh, so the, the basic idea is is that because the um, uh, over time uh, that um, uh, silicon pad is deformed, it's probably caused the chip to overheat and um, thermal cycling on the BGA cracks the balls. So the uh, reduction of heat transfer would in, in, uh, increase the thermal cycles between on and off. So put it all back together again and give it a quick test. Fingers crossed. Okay, looks like we've had success at least um, over... just put a little mirror here so you can just see the light um, from, the, from the TV. So it's currently red. Before, when you when you uh, switched it on, uh, it would um, uh, sort of go to a really slow dimming of red. But now, watch. And we have white. <laughs> All right. DC voltage, so in theory we should now have, make sure I'm not going to put my hand on anything stupid, we should now have 59, well 53 volts, as opposed to the 59.2. Yeah, I was calculating based on resistors and beaters and calculating what the input impedance was based on the resistors, and as I couldn't get 59.2, no matter what I did. So it's it's actually sort of gives it still makes me happier to see that it's not 59 but 53 um, because that's closer to the sort of voltage that I was calculating based on the, the specs of the, uh, the 
put the switch in regulator. Um, oh, and we can actually see the backlight is on through these holes. So... Alright, so let's let me let me get put the stand back on and have a have a look. Okay, now you can see my reflection and plug the power in and hey! Time is wrong obviously. Life is good. Oh I haven't got an aerial. Ah, here we go. Cool. So, where, the way it, where it stands now is is that I'm a little bit unhappy with the, the reflow work I did on the BGA. Um, I still got those those tickering wires on the back. I need to um, when I on the power, the PSU I'll put those two wire wrap wires and fed them out from the um, uh, the um, the driving circuitry to switch on the um, the inverter. The uh, um, so I will plug an aerial in and all that sort of stuff and uh, run it for a while and then. Uh, probably do some tinkering with the firmware and all that sort of stuff at the back. Okay, so all back together again, put the power in, red lights on, switch it on. Yes, no? And the back lights on, you can see. Um, so I've pulled, pulled the, the wires off um, that were kicking that I'd under there to measure the actual switching on of the, the inverter, the boost converter for the LED supply. So I thought I'll just run over a few measurements before I put it on this longevity tests. Um, so the LED power is 53 something on it. 53.9 volts. Can you read the meter? Yeah, it looks like you can. So, uh, let's see what standby voltage is. None of that should have changed. That was all. Oops. Uh, 3.537. Um, oh, the the drive drive. What they what they've done is they've conveniently put a, a, an open-ended link on the, on the board so that you can measure the drive signal. Um, and as you can see, it's 3.25, where it was zero volts before. Um, and the error pin, as far as I could tell, was uh, not connected on the uh, on the main board. And oh, I didn't record that. I was, yeah, there was oh, to, to actually determine that. I actually um, um, used my. Um, Meter on the two gig ohm setting, uh, and whilst I physically traced the wiring to there and then tried to figure out where it was, I could see all of the optional circuitry was not installed. Consequently, um, uh, I couldn't detect or couldn't follow on the on the PCB if the trace was being used anywhere. So then I said, screw it, and I just used my my two gig ohm range on my meter to measure it. And, uh, sure enough, it was just completely open circuit. I even tried using my uh, LCR meter, and well, basically it, it measured, I think it was like 30 picofarads or something, which is pretty much close to what you would get just by measuring um, uh, the leads, not far off. Um, but yeah, the 2 gig ohm range was the, uh, the, the clincher for me, that it was open circuit and wasn't connected to anything. So, so that's good. Um, uh, the, the short end of all of that is, is that the first thing I went for was the power supply because the most obvious thing was that the backlight wasn't on. Um, I don't do this as a normal sort of a, a job. The last time I fixed a, a, some, you know, an LCD display or something like that was probably ooh, 
10 years or more ago, um, and so I haven't kept up to date. LCD TVs were, were, I don't think they were around back in those days, and uh, I certainly didn't got, get an opportunity to fix those. And my skills are mostly in, in IT, so the closest thing I come to were, were monitors. Um, and, and they don't have these sort of split designs, at least they didn't back then. So I was not expecting, in, in hindsight it's, it's obvious, uh, but I was not expecting that um, uh, the main board uh, would actually control the, um, the LED backlight power supply. Um, so all of the, I did all of the tracing of the circuitry, measuring. I couldn't find a damn thing wrong with with anything on the power supply unit. So I then started looking at the, the MCU and stuff like that, and then started following the signals, and then I thought, Here's a novel idea. I'll go to some websites and see see what people have to say. And sure enough, that confirmed what I thought that uh, the main board would actually send signals back to the PSU to switch it on. Um, I did note first up that there was that error signal, and I couldn't measure anything early on in the piece. I didn't know what that meant, um, and it turns out the error signal is not actually used on this model. Um, so they use this this uh, drive connection here and if I were to disconnect that wire I'd pretty much guarantee the, the LED light would turn off. Um, but at this stage um, I think we're um, ready for a burn-in test. Um, because it's working I don't wanna don't wanna do anything on the, the main board. I don't want to touch that heat sink and uh, all that sort of stuff again. Um, like I said, I was a little bit concerned for two reasons. One, one is I was expecting the um, uh, the solder paste to ball up, to melt on top of the um, the chip. Um, uh, but also, I applied a low lower level level of heat for a very long time, probably on, right on the limit of what you would normally put a chip stress a chip for. Um, in the past, I've 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 gone by um, uh, uh, the flux, and, and in this case, I, I put a lot of flux underneath it. And it, by the time it had uh, evaporated, like I couldn't see it moving around under the um, the, the the airflow of the, the the hot air tool. Um, that's where I would normally stop, and I went on beyond that in this case. Because I wanted to try and get the uh, the solder paste to melt, but uh, obviously that that old solder paste um, I'm going to need to do some experimenting with on something less delicate. Um, but uh, I, I would consider that a failure. I, I've certainly seen people um, take uh, you know little bits of uh, solder, just like cut a little bit off and sit it on top of the chip, and then heat the chip up and wait for that solder to melt. Um, I don't recall whether the, the, the operator of that particular, behind that video, uh, was put a lot of air onto the solder itself, uh, whereas I was trying to direct the heat at the chip, because that it's the chip that you're heating up to, to re-ball, uh, reconnect the, the, BG, the, the BGA connection. Uh, so, anyway, it's not a waffle, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on a... On a a longevity test now, and uh, I'll put the back back on, heat it up. Uh, I might put a, a temperature probe. She's uh, quite warm. That's uh, worthwhile measuring. Uh, do I use the new meter? Yeah, I suppose, I suppose that's handy. Um, uh, in terms of that hot air tool, um, uh, the gas one. I, um, I put it in front of the, the tip of this probe and it certainly went up to, if I held it there for long enough, when I say long enough, a few seconds, like two, two, three seconds and she was too hot for this probe, this probe's, this lead on this uh, particular temperature one is, is only rated for 230 volts DC. Uh, 230 degrees C, um, which is unusual. My other one, I'd say the reason for that is all this crap that you know, this heat shrink and all that stuff they've got on here, uh, and, and this 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 fabric 
protect them. So let's say 45 degrees. finger burn test. So yes, I'll put that on a, on a burning test and uh, finish up the video later. So here's another problem that I found with this TV. It's um, the speakers. See the rubber is separated. If I um, push down here you can see there's a gap between the the surround and so most of the speakers are like that so what I'm going to use is this rubber cement for but for a bicycle um, in theory this is much better than um, than um, uh, uh, silicon and all that kind of stuff so uh, I've already done the other side um, and it's mostly working so I'll just show you the shot here and I'll probably just do a, a stretch from along here uh, and I need to get the thing in my hand to do to go around the, the bend so that's going to be out of shot so I'll um, probably restart afterwards so uh, I've just got a toothpick um, which I've um, sort of hacked away at a bit on the, the, the broad end make it thinner so it's a bit more flexible and remove the splinters on it, you know, sanding and all that kind of stuff. So I'll put some rubber cement on the end and get it between and it dries pretty quickly so difficult to do it with, with, with the camera shot. Um, it's a bit untidier than I did off camera but uh, um, I didn't actually get it on the top of the rubber with the other ones I just got it in between the seams. So the bulk of the glue is on the, the other side. This is actually a lot more difficult at this angle. It's much better with the thing in my lap. So I'll um, continue to do that in my lap off camera. Okay, so it's it's uh, still drying, but I've made a bit of a, a mess there. Ah, there's still a bit of a gap on that one. Add that end. Is that a gap? Bloody camera angle's not good. There's no lip there, so that's glued. There's no lip. This looks a little bit like it's but where the joint is, so if I just leave that to dry. So the, the glue was from a bicycle repair kit, if I didn't make that obvious before. 
uh, bicycle puncture repair kit.